four years of keto, and 44 days of eating nothing but beef, butter, bacon, and eggs. And the lab results are in. So let's talk about them. Hey, what's up, family? I'm Rachel. And I'm Joe. And we are Two, Two Crazy, Crazy Ketos. Ketos. And if you're new to our channel, welcome. Here on Two Crazy Ketos, we do different things like recipe videos and we do product reviews. We talk about various keto topics. And then every Monday, we go live on Keto on the Couch. We just kind of talk about what's going on in our lives for the week. You can find us on different social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And we have a website, which is twocrazyketos.com. And that's where you're going to find all the different recipes. Now we do upload at least five new videos every single week. So make sure you subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to hit the little bell icon and that way every single time we upload a new video, you'll be alerted to it. So for four years, we have been keto. Pretty keto, not carnivore. We, we ate our share of meat. We ate our share of vegetables. We ate our share of keto treats. We've had our ups, we've had our downs. And even though we never went off of keto, we never had foods that weren't very low carb, over the last year, year and a half, we put on a few pounds. I think like the entire world did, <laughs> right? Because this was a stressful season. Yep. And we were starting to find that our way of doing things, the things that we were relying on, the, the foods that we were used to eating, weren't quite having the same effect on us and we weren't having the same success that we did in the past when we were initially losing weight and feeling healthy on keto. Enter in beef, butter, bacon, and eggs. So just about 60 days ago, we were challenged to eat nothing but beef, butter, bacon, and eggs. It was initially gonna be 25 days and we moved it to 44 days. Cause we felt great. And see what happens to our body. And we have documented that entire journey daily with a vlog. And I will leave a link for that playlist right up over Rachel's head if you may be seeing this one first. We documented everything we ate during 44 days of beef, butter, bacon, and eggs. And we have in the middle of right now, documenting, adding other foods back in. Now, when we first got started on beef, butter, bacon, and eggs, we did go get our labs done and we weren't really surprised by them. Some of the numbers were a little shocking to some people. Right, like our total cholesterol. For us, we were completely fine with that. Now, over those 44 days, we did have some really good outward changes. So if you didn't see that video, although I will link it right here, we did go over our measurements as a result of 44 days of beef, butter, bacon, and eggs. And we also showed you our pictures, but we're gonna go ahead and show them to you one more time very the quickly. The underwear pictures? The underwear pictures. So we'll start off with Rachel. Here was her before and after. Again, this is 44 days. Only, actually she didn't lose, she gained 0.2 pounds, but you can see a significant difference, especially in her midsection. Taking a look at it from the back, same thing. You can see where her waist is shrunk. And then again in the side and then on the other side. Yeah. So Rachel had some phenomenal outward change. Some body composition differences. And that is what I wanted. Mm -hmm. And that is usually in the past, the totality of how I measured success. It's not like, you know, we were constantly getting blood work done mm -hmm. whenever we would, you know, even when we started keto, it wasn't right. like we had a ton of blood work done. I've had blood work done one time in four years. And that was only because I was having some back pain and we were concerned it could be kidney function or something like that. So they read all my labs and said, you're perfect. Right. But normally we monitor success with what's going on on the outside of us. Yeah. Now taking a look at my before and after pictures pretty quickly here. You can see here, I had a giant difference in my stomach and in my chest, and you can also see it in my face. And again, this is over the course of 44 days. And there's from the back, the side, and then the other side. Now, I was very happy with those results. If you go back and do take a look at the overall measurements and all that stuff, I lost, according to the in-body scale, nine pounds of body fat. I'll take that 
all day long. To top it off, I feel better, I'm sleeping better, I can move better, and I don't have any inflammation. Well, and it was the same for me. So I love where we saw the body composition change take place because you don't get to always decide, you know, where is fat coming off of? And the fact that it was mostly out of your midsection that was really, really nice. And it was the same for me. I mean, that is where I wanted to see the change. I wanted my booty to like look different at the end of this challenge. And I thought that that was really awesome. And since we've come out of the initial BBB and E, we have maintained that change. And actually we continue to lose. Yes, I am actually down to 154 at this point. So three more pounds, whereas you didn't see in our initial, you know, finish line record of what you know how many pounds i had lost yep. so we've got our lab results but before we discuss them i want to make this very clear we are not doctors or nurses or any type of health professional and anything we're going to talk about please do not consider this medical advice. Make sure you're consulting your doctor for anything you do. We're just two people who accepted a challenge because we're willing to do challenges and food things and see how things affect our body. And the whole idea was to see what does it do to our outward body? Like how do we like look on the outside? How do we feel? And then finally, what happens with our blood work and just like we showed you our underwear pictures it was important for us to show you what is authentically going on inside of our body because i think that you can you know wear an outfit that that shows your best side that's why we used underwear pictures to show you the results because we can't alter them like right. that's just we're out there and it's the same thing for numbers i mean i can't put a cute skirt on it, the blood lab work, like it is what it is. It is what it is. So I just wanna make sure everybody's under the full understanding, please make sure you hit the thumbs up button that you understand that we are not giving you any medical advice here. Please don't look at our results and say like, well, I'm gonna do what Joe and Rachel do because they said it's okay. We're doing what we feel is okay for our bodies. So let's get into the lab results. I did talk to Dave Feldman for a little while um, on just a personal basis as a friend because he is really, I consider an expert when it comes to cholesterol. And he was able to explain a few things to me, but I do want to encourage you, if you have questions about cholesterol, if you want to know what type you are, if you want to know how to hack your system before you get a blood work done for your doctor, go check out his website. It's called cholesterolcode.com. I will leave a link for that down below. I will also leave a link for Own Your Labs, which is where we got our lab work done on our own. And uh, if you use that link down below, that link will give you every lab that we got, everything that we have here. And it also gives you a 5% discount. And then you can get an additional 10% discount if you allow Own Your Labs to use your data anonymously to further the studies and figure out more about the in inner and outer working of cholesterol. Let's start off with reminding you of what Rachel's starting numbers were. So before BBBE, Rachel's total cholesterol was 409. That was shocking. <laughs> Her LDL was 306. Now those two numbers right there would scare most people. Oh, right? absolutely. Rachel's LDL was higher than what most doctors recommend as your total cholesterol. You know, they say don't have a total cholesterol over 200 and her LDL alone was over 300. I am a high achiever. So getting on with that, her, her HDL was 87. Her VLDL, which is also known as remnant cholesterol, was 16. Triglycerides of 57. Her fasting glucose was 86. Her A1C was 4.8. And her fasting insulin was 1.7. I was very, very pleased going into this where with where my triglycerides were and my insulin and all those numbers. Like I felt like even though that total cholesterol number that everybody warned you against looked scary, everything else supported a viewpoint that I'm doing okay. Yeah, now there are more and more doctors who are getting on board with 
It's not so much the total cholesterol, it's not so much the LDL, but the better marker, and again, not all doctors are this way, but there are some that are stepping up, and this is one of the things that Dave Feldman has been researching, that really are beginning to believe that the better marker would be your VLDL or your remnant cholesterol and your triglycerides, both of which were very low for us when we started this challenge. So moving on to her after numbers, are you ready? Are I'm, you holding on to something? I'm holding on. Okay, so after 44 days of beef, butter, bacon, and eggs, Rachel's total <laughs> cholesterol went to 532. What a difference 44 days made. <laughs> Now let's see if it's heading in the right direction. Now, one thing I do want to say, and this is something that I talked to Dave Feldman about, and there's a lot of research about this, that as you lose fat, generally your cholesterol will go up. Why? Because your fat cells are shrinking and it's got to go somewhere. Her LDL shot from 306 to 415. So at this point, Rachel's LDL was higher than her total cholesterol before beef, butter, bacon, and eggs. Are you concerned? No, I'm not. You're not? I'm not because I, I know that I shouldn't put a lot of stock in those total numbers, but I am looking to see what is the remnant cholesterol look like now. Right, now again, this is not medical advice. This is just what has happened to us over 44 days and use this information how you will. Okay. So now let's talk about her HDL. That's what people consider the good cholesterol. Her HDL went from 87 to 119. Wow. I mean, that is a huge movement and a very small amount of time. Yeah. I mean, just think about that. If you are trying to make a shift in your life, if you're trying to see different, you know, changes in your blood lab work, 44 days does not seem like that much time. Yeah, I think most people would absolutely kill to have an, an HDL that high. I mean, really, you wanna to strive to have it over 50 and you're double that, more in, than double that. In a very short amount of time. Now let's move on to the two numbers that, in my personal opinion, with all of the research that I've done and after talking to Dave Feldman, these are the numbers that really matter to me when it comes to uh, risk for heart disease and things like that. So we're gonna look at her VLDL, which is her remnant cholesterol. It actually reads at a negative two. So that's probably a rounding error, essentially, her remnant cholesterol is zero. Now, if you wanna know how to figure out your remnant cholesterol when you look at your cholesterol test, what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your HDL and you're gonna add your LDL, and then you're gonna subtract those two numbers from your total cholesterol. You wanna have that number as low as possible, and yours is zero. Right, and this is a huge concern to me. Like, mm -hmm. I want to see good numbers in that area because my father when we talk about like what is the history of our family my my grandmother had terrible heart problems my father died of a heart attack like these are things and you know cholesterol was an issue for him um these are things that i'm looking for now moving on to the rest of your numbers her triglycerides dropped from 57 to 47. Her glucose basically stayed the same at 8.5. Her A1C is 4.9, right around the same way. Her insulin is three. And then we have her C-peptide is one. And her C-reactive protein is 0.76. Now, with the insulin, uh, after talking to people, that's still a very low number. And it, it, your insulin changes all the time. Mm -hmm. The first time we got the test done, our test was done at 7.30 in the morning. The second time, the test was done at 11.30 in the afternoon. But that is not a significant jump. I mean, you could test your insulin all day long. You do need to have some insulin. If your insulin is like down like 0.4 or something like that, that could be an issue. You could be getting into, you know, having type one diabetes. Again, not doctors or health professionals. As far as the C-reactive protein, uh, Dave was telling me like, that's a great number because that's an inflammation marker. Well, it's interesting to find that information out because I've never tested for that before. Yeah, so overall, if for us, if you look at the, those numbers and figure out like, hey, am I at risk for diabetes? Your numbers are perfect. 
are you at risk for heart disease? Depends on the doctor you talk to. Right. Now, along with that, there are some other tests which we didn't put up on the slide, but I will go over them with you. So we did particle size. Um, and again, because I'm not a health professional, I don't wanna to dive too much into it, but uh, Rachel's LDL size is 22.1, and she's considered a pattern A with the LDL size, and that's a good thing. You ready to get into mine? Let's see. Okay. So beforehand, my total cholesterol was 348. That seems like a slacker, yo. <laughs> and my LDL was 267. So once again, my LDL was higher. Again, this was before eating beef, butter, bacon, and eggs. My LDL was higher than what most people would consider to be a safe total cholesterol. Uh, moving back to that, my HDL was 65. My VLDL, which was my remnant cholesterol, was 16 as well. Triglycerides were 62. Glucose was 90. A1C it, uh, was 4.8. Actually, that's that's incorrect. My A1C was 5.2. And uh, my insulin was 4.1. And again, I was very happy with this. Like I was, I was happy with these numbers because they reflect what has happened on a general keto lifestyle. Like yeah. this is what the keto life has done for us. And, and we're just regular people eating keto food. Yep. You want to see my after results? Yes. Okay. So here's my after results. So my after results, my total cholesterol was 365. So it went up a couple points, but not too much. My LDL went up to 272, again, just a couple points. But my HDL went from 65 to 89. Wow. And my remnant cholesterol dropped from 16 to 4. That's incredible. In addition, my triglycerides dropped from 62, which is already low, to 49. My glucose was a 92. My A1C did stay the same. Like I said, that other that other chart over there is wrong. Uh, it is 5.2. My insulin was 3.8. My C peptide was 1.2, and C reactive protein was 0.66. So again, now Dr. Barry has lots of videos on blood work, and he is a better person to go watch to learn more about things. But like one of the things he has talked about in videos is keeping that C reactive protein very, very low. So I am very happy, especially considering the amount of arthritis I've had in my body with injuries to my ankle, injuries to my elbow and my wrist and things like that, to see that inflammation marker very low, like almost non-existent, I'm really happy. More importantly, I feel good. Well, I do too. And as somebody who's in, I, I'm in my mid forties, you're now in your fifties, the future looks really bright because I do not feel the same as I did when I was in my 20s. In my 20s, I felt very bogged down, very foggy, joints hurting, and I just thought that as we continue to live our life, it's going to get worse, right? right. It's not going to get better. And the fact that not only can a keto diet help you to have good results and to get better as you age, having this stricter protocol that we practice over this these 44 days and really taking a, a, a stringent look at your ingredients made us do even better, which right. was incredible. Yeah. So, I mean, and again, we ate a tremendous amount of saturated fat and yet you see our HDL going up. Again, we feel phenomenal. If you are curious, we both have perfect blood pressure. So it's not like we have high blood pressure combined with high total cholesterol. We have perfect blood pressure. The only two markers when you look at that, that don't seem correct is that total cholesterol and the LDL. Now in talking to Dave, he has put us into a category. He said that there are not a lot of people like this, but he's seeing more and more of it in the low carb community. Uh, and we're, he's titles us, he says it's his triad. Uh, and that is we're considered lean mass hyper responders. Now he does have an entire article on that on his uh, website. And he actually just recently, I was looking on his website, they got a donation to further like, you know, learn about this and to further, you know, figure out like exactly what's going on because lean mass hyper responders generally something doesn't look right. Like it, the numbers don't make sense because we have a high LDL, a high HDL, 
but low triglycerides, and then we have low remnant cholesterol. And I think it's important for us to mention that we do not take any medication at all. No. There is not one piece of medication that we are taking at all at any time of the month, you know, to affect numbers in any way. Yeah. So that is our labs. And I know there's a lot of people right now down in the comments going, are you serious with those total cholesterols? You're, you think that that's okay? For me, again, not medical advice. I am perfectly happy with my numbers. I would rather feel the way I feel right now, not having the inflammation, having more energy, having better sleep, eating the way I eat, enjoying my food, not freaking out and worrying about am I overeating, and then seeing the low triglycerides, which again, is a really good indication for cardiovascular disease, seeing the low insulin, seeing the low glucose, and knowing that I'm not at risk for diabetes. Well, and you know, when we started this four years ago, you know, people were saying, then you're gonna drop dead. So right. I guess the only way to prove that that is incorrect is to continue living. So yeah. we have continued on this keto journey and we've even practiced a, a stricter protocol than what we normally adhere to. And we're not dead. So yeah. that's the good news. That's great news. Congratulations. High five, High on, five that. on that one. Still alive. We are still alive, feeling great. We're gonna continue this moving forward. Um, my personal, what I want to do, and, and again, Rachel is her own person and she can do what she wants to do. I am going to continue eating mostly beef along with butter and eggs and, you know, pork and, and a few vegetables thrown in. But I really am going to continue where probably about 80 to 90 percent of my diet will be beef, butter, bacon and eggs. Why? I like it. Well, and it's the same for me because I enjoy these results. I enjoy feeling good. I enjoy not riding a roller coaster of ups and downs. And, and I just like what it's doing in my body. I like what it's doing in my skin, in my hair, in my mind, all of it. Yeah, now that does not mean we're carnivores. It doesn't mean we're never eating keto snacks. We are. It doesn't mean we're not having keto chow. We are. It doesn't mean we're not gonna have chicken. We are. It's just that our go-to instead of go-to snacks and, and go-to, you know, eating super lean, our go-to is going to be eating more one-to-one, -one, including a lot more beef. Well, that is gonna be our video for today. Now, if you like seeing videos like this, take a look at some of the videos that we have linked right over there. Also, make sure you take a look at our most recent video, which I'm gonna put right over here. Well, whether you head this way or you head this way, don't forget to head this way. Subscribe to our channel and click the little bell icon, and that way, every single time we upload a new video, you'll be alerted to it. Till next time. Bye. Bye.